I just love how it's women. I'm here for it. What's up, y'all? It's your girl Kayla, also known as Kay Gianni. If you're new here, what's up? Welcome to the gang. You know what I'm saying? Make sure you go ahead and subscribe and comment down below a little raise your hand emoji if you're new here. Okay? Like I said, make sure you subscribe because it's for the if you clicked on this video then you are familiar with that i have made a community post about you guys asking me questions i wanted to film a q a mostly geared to fitness and i was actually surprised that i actually got some questions the very first question that i see it is from n underscore lynn she said hi i'm a new subscriber and i'm enjoying your content thank you girl what's up can you share the supplements you use during your cutting and bulking phase? When I had started my cut, I had started working with a brand, EHP Labs. So when I was with EHP Labs, I was using their Oxy Shred, but you don't need a supplement to cut, and that is just the real i would say in your cutting phase just focus on your nutrition like eating high protein minimizing your carbs but that doesn't mean cutting out carbs completely i know a lot of people are like stranger danger stranger danger when they hear the word carbs like carbs are your best clean up your food instead of eating out cook your food at home maybe do meal prepping if i was never working with ehp labs I would never have a cutting supplement. I know a question that will come after that is, does it really work? I wouldn't solely give 100% credit to a product at all. I would say if your nutrition is in line and you're using it, then granted you're gonna see results. But in my opinion, does it just automatically cut down your body fat percentage? Absolutely not. And that's just the real. Y'all can fight me in the comments, it's okay. During my bulking phase, a product that I love to use is creatine. That is probably one of the supplements that I will stand 10 toes down about because it's a really good supplement. If you are drinking an abundance of water, you're eating your protein, you're eating like the amount of foods that you're supposed to eat for your body to build muscle and you're incorporating creatine which is like five grams you're going to see changes if you're in a bulking phase and if you're practicing progressive overload you will definitely see changes in your bulking phase so that is the only supplement i would take in my bulking phase or a protein powder and i would recommend any type of protein powder if you want to go the vegan route go the vegan route me personally i'm not a big fan of the vegan protein powders i am a whey girl all the way i love whey protein powders for example like optimum nutrition love the rise protein powders if you guys ever see my what i eat in a day when i've done my overnight oats it is so good so i hope that answers your question if you have another question just comment down below this is from take me to your leader girl is that the lord how you doing girl how you doing thank you for your comment thank you for your questions with an s because she got a few first question is how do you know if you over if you're over training a muscle and that's a really good question so if you're over training a muscle you'll know because sometimes you can get like small injuries for example me at one point i had realized oh my god i don't really have hamstrings like that and i used to like go crazy on my hamstrings i'm talking about like three times a week back to back to back because it'll be like full body then lower body then glutes and it'll all be hamstrings incorporated like just different variations and i had got like a little i wouldn't even say little i had that pain for like six months if it is extremely sore to the point where like you're in like complete pain soreness is normal but if it's like a soreness that is out of the norm that is one way like you can know 
you're overtraining a muscle. So just be mindful and careful not to overtrain, like give your body time to recover. Recovery is just as important, if anything, the most important after doing your training. Your next question, does your libido change when you get leaner? That is a good question, even a good question, like a question I should be asking myself. I can say to an extent that it does. And I feel like that is why my coach has me on that. Um, Actually, let me go get it instead of telling you a story. It's called, it's by a brand called, Embr well, Astro Flav. It's a woman's hormonal balance type of vitamin. I mentioned this in my videos before. It says increases energy, mood, skin complexion, stress levels, like manages stress levels and increases libido. So if you're unfamiliar for those that are watching, libido is like, your sex drive. Since I didn't know too much about the question, I did a little bit of research. Everything all ties down to your nutrition and that's just the real of it. So I looked up this, does low fat affect libido? It says, those who do not get enough healthy fat in their diet are more likely to have a low libido. Right now, my coach has my fats very, very low. I'm talking 35 grams, 45 grams of fat. For a normal person in their everyday life, that is very low. If your fats are low, this is to you girl for your question. If your fats are low in your diet then, and if you're experiencing like a low libido type energy, and I would say that can be a reason, but for me, I'm kind of on the same page. I would say it's just because our food is lower. Next question, what are some good tips for hydration? I have a whole gallon of water, like a gallon, like a container that is literally a gallon. I like to drink that. Sometimes I even buy an additional water and I like to get some Propel packets. I'll insert a picture right here. It's Propel, it has electrolytes in it. If you want, if you don't want to get Propel packets, I would use pink Himalayan salt like my coach has suggested to me, but I prefer the Propel idea better because it's like flavored little packets and it like flavors your water. It's like really, really good. Or eat foods that are like high in water. So like cucumbers, watermelons. Those are literally my two favorite, cucumbers and watermelon because they're like very, very high in water good way to get extra hydration so those are about like the only tips i have okay let's see and then another question how many sets are too much i am doing 10 sets of 10 of four standing exercises with moderate weights i've never done 10 sets of 10. <laughs> I feel like that is OD. I feel like you will be in there forever. But I guess it's no different from a person doing like high volume training when they do like four sets of 20 reps. Like, I guess it makes no different. Yeah, I guess it makes no difference. Like, as long as you're not using extremely heavy weight when you do your 10 reps, and you're mindful of like how long is your rest time and you're not like over exhausting yourself, then I feel like it's okay. I've never not heard of 10 sets of 10. I've heard of that before, but have I done that? No, I never in my fitness lifestyle career have I done 10 sets of 10. I just, I would rather, let me just put it like this. In my opinion, I would rather just do like four sets of 15 and 20 than 10 sets of 10. But if your coach has you doing that and what he has you doing is working and if you feel like it works for you and it's comfortable, then do it. I like, I'm not, I'm not your coach. I can't say, oh, this is better than that because realistically speaking, there is nothing better than the other. It's just your personal preference and what works for you. But in my opinion, that that is just crazy, girl. That is just crazy. Like I'm, I'm gonna have to see, like, coach, coach, what you got going on? <laughs> okay. Next question is from my girl Shea Butter. What's up, girl? You always be in my comments. I appreciate you. She said, "How do you deal with lack of energy after work to go to the gym and work out?" 
I work a full-time job and usually after work, I'm mentally exhausted. I force myself to go to the gym to be disciplined, but my strength and endurance is usually affected. I know it's all a mental game, but I'm curious how you deal with this. Girl, number one, I be tired. I be, I be wanting to sleep in all the time like especially like since i didn't really change my position at work but what i do at work now is like i'm the one who counts all the money and sometimes i'm at work till like 12 a.m mind you i go to work like two three o'clock i'm at work i don't get off till like 12 a.m 1 a.m or whatever and then i have to come home just to get up again like I have to get up at like 8, 8.30 and then go to the gym. And then I have to come back home and get ready to go back to work. Mind you, I'm not, I'm not full time, I'm part time. So I'm pretty sure it's much more of a tax on you than it is on me. The best advice I can give you is just do the best that you can. Every day is not meant to be perfect. Some days, like recently right now, I've just been exhausted. Like my body is exhausted. I am mentally exhausted. When I come home late from work, I don't want to do anything. So what I've been doing, I've been taking melatonin so I can just knock out. And then, you know, you just gotta repeat the whole cycle. like. If you have a goal set for yourself, you just you just got to do it. I don't know what time you go to work, but let's say if you work like a 9 to 5, then I would just say wake up early. Like wake up a little bit earlier, even like 4 a.m., get to the gym by 5. If your workouts are like an hour or two, like give yourself that grace period. Then come home, get ready to go to work. And then when you come home from work, you have all that time to rest and recover. For me, it's a little, like, that's just what works for me. I get off of work late. I try to get in at least six to seven hours of sleep, like whatever sleep I can get. Get after it, get it done, come home, do what I gotta do, go to work, come back home and repeat. How bad do you want it type? mentality like you said it's all a mental game if you're extremely tired just be like hey i gotta take a break it's okay to take a break don't force yourself because then that's how you're gonna like burn out i feel like everyone should be in tune with their body and actually take the time to listen to their body when they need a break like i know in this little hustle go get it society everybody want to be after it and stuff like that but sometimes you gotta slowly roll and take a break that's literally what i do next question brianna spears hey girl how you doing i just love how it's women i'm here for it okay she said what are your go-to machines for legs i feel i've been neglecting my legs and want to focus on that more girl i got you my favorite leg machine one which will always be top tier for me, it's going to be leg extensions. I absolutely love, 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 love leg extensions because you can do different tempos, you can do burnouts on there. I feel like the leg extension machine has incorporated, has made a substantial change in my quad growth and I will always stick beside, stick beside the leg extension. Another one is leg press now i know a lot of people these days they talk about different foot positionings just just place your feet regular on on the little leg press thing that's called the narrow stance and just do the same thing i would say slow down the movement tap into that mind muscle connection to really get that growth and also practice progressive overload but don't be too cocky with it like make sure you can actually push the weight make sure you can actually feel the muscle that you're working engaging i know this is going to sound crazy but for me when i'm trying to tap into my muscle connection i close my eyes and envision the muscle working it don't matter what muscle group it could be my back it could be my shoulders it could be my triceps anything if i have to close my eyes to envision that muscle in motion oh i'm gonna feel it when i'm working it so that's another one the next one really isn't a machine 
but you can use a machine. I like back squats or front squats. So you can do that either on a squat rack or you can do it on a Smith machine. I feel like if you wanna get a little jazzy with it when you do front squats, place a plate on the floor, put your heels on it and squat down so that you can get more emphasis on your quads. So another name that a lot of people may know it as is the goblet squat. If you don't feel comfortable with doing it on a squat rack, you can use a dumbbell right in front of you and perform a goblet squat. That's one of my third favorite exercises. That's like right there, neck and neck with back squats is the goblet squat and the front squat. So I would suggest those three and to throw in another one because this is like the absolute best one, but I hate it, but it's so good, lunges. You can either do walking lunges or stationary lunges. Literally the exercises that I'm telling you are the exercises that I've used within my entire fitness career. Even my coach has me doing those exercises this day and I just this was my first time ever working with a coach and it just goes to show that it's effective and it's beneficial so stick with the basics and you will see growth girl you will see growth and if you need to see a video I have a video of my quads up here so that you can tap into it girls do the workout do it Next question, Kita Sheree. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, girl. Hey, girl, hey. <laughs> Thank you. She said, I just want to say that you look amazing and have been following your journey for a while now. What, girl? Shoot. Thank you, girl. She said, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe we have the same body type endomorph, and we do. I'm indeed an endomorph. If so, what changes did you make to start seeing results during your cutting season? This kind of goes back to the very first question about the cutting and the bulking phase. The changes I've made is nutrition. Now, a lot, like right now you guys see that I am counting calories and all of that, which is good. Counting calories is good. It's effective, you know, you know exactly how much you're putting into your body, but it's not sustainable like that's not something that i would recommend for someone to do in their everyday life to keep a physique now if bodybuilding is everything for you then by all means go ahead do what you do shawty but i recommend to people to just do intuitive eating and i like to reference the plate so I use, it's this little picture that I found on Google and it's like a reference of like what your place should look like. So in your place you should have protein, carbs, fats. Yeah, you should have protein, carbs, and fats, which are each of your macros. For me, I would like my protein to, to be a little bit more than my carbs and I would have my fats and that could be like avocado. If you don't do avocados, then just put your oil, like your fats in your food, like olive oil, coconut oil. You can eat it in your fish, like salmon. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, peanut butter. But I would just su suggest like the plate method. Make sure you have a protein, a carb, and a fat. And you know, some leafy greens because what what's that? We need to start focusing on our fiber. I say this in in my vlogs now, like that's one thing I'm trying to stay right with is my fiber. So I would suggest that like intuitive eating, make sure that you're drinking tons of water. Cause when I remember when I was doing the 75 hard, I was not tracking a doggone thing. Like everything was just based off of like, you know, clean, nutritional foods i was making my food still tasty and looking good it's not like prep food like how i am now it's not as strict it's actually way better i was still able to eat tacos and stuff like that it's because i made everything at home a tip that i give everyone shop on the outskirts of the grocery store 
shop on the outskirts because those are the least processed foods unless you go to like the bakery section or something you know because the bakery section is the outskirts but we, we ain't even gonna get into much about that so just shop on the outskirts the vegetables the fruits the meats the dairy the other protein like the eggs and the yogurt and stuff like that shop on the outskirts that is the biggest tip being with the coach is kind of different like changes i've seen during my cutting phase just eating high protein drinking my water making sure i'm getting my veggies intakes in like if you don't like veggies i know they make supplements for them go ahead take your supplements but make sure you're taking them daily okay make sure you take them daily because don't take them one day and then you don't take another day it's already enough you ain't eating your veggies you can at least drink them shot it okay am i right or am i right okay all right as long as we're on the same page but those are like the changes i made it's mostly just nutrition like cleaning up the nutrition sticking to my water not neglecting cardio okay i know a lot of people are like oh i don't do cardio i don't do cardio and they, they be rapping to me about that do your cardio it don't have to be anything extreme you can do it you could go for a walk around your block okay just, or make sure you just get 10,000 steps in do 10,000 steps or go for a walk do like a little 30 minute walk on the treadmill when you at the gym it don't even gotta be no crazy speed or nothing because I know these days on social media you're like oh do level this do level this ain't nobody trying to hear all that rah rah get on the Stairmaster if you gotta do level 2 on the stair hell level 1 do it just make sure you get your cardio in and it's not even just for the matter of fact of oh i'm trying to drop body fat it's good for your cardio your cardiovascular health too okay we want to make sure we're not just taking care of the the other muscles our heart is a muscle too all right so make sure you do that those are the changes i've done or those are the things i've done to see changes throughout my cutting phase and i'm still in a cutting phase if i get any more tips or any or i go through any more changes then i would be more than likely to share it with you okay i hope that answers your question if there's like a little confusion just go ahead and comment because i know i'll be all over the place okay sheila sheila girl how you doing <laughs> how you doing sheila i'm good girl how long have you been in fitness did you have to bulk up first to have that physique? How long have I been in fitness? <laughs> I've been in fitness going five years now. This year, that's a that's a long time. That's a long time. But I would say the last three years is when I've taken fitness a little bit more serious. Yeah, I love fitness. But did you have to bulk up first to have that physique? Absolutely not. I was already kind of like a medium heavy girl um, at the time when I started my fitness journey. And my goal, just like everyone else when they start, because at the time I didn't really have that that social, on my social media, I had Instagram, but on my Instagram I didn't have like any fitness people to follow or anything like that. It wasn't until COVID happened when I created a fitness page and then I started following all these fitness people. That's when the whole idea of strength training came in. But let me tell you what happened. So when I first started, my whole goal was like, I want to be skinty. I want to be like, I want to be skinty, okay? So I was a little cardio bunny at the very beginning. Yes, that's all I did was cardio. I already didn't have any muscle or whatever. So I got to the point where I was like skinny fat. It, it, it didn't look good. That's when my boyfriend, he actually started making me programs to go to the gym. And we would be on FaceTime sometimes and he would demonstrate how to properly do the exercises and stuff like that. Cool. I was doing that, but it was still embarrassing. Like I was new to the gym. I'm on the phone with somebody. They're trying to teach me how to do something. I still can't understand what they talking about over the phone. You know what I'm saying? And then my nutrition wasn't in line. I was one of those people like I eat good. I eat clean. I eat healthy, but I would over consume. Like I, I'm talking about, oh yeah, I just had rice and chicken. 
and some vegetables but i'm the type to go get second thirds fourths and fifths okay so you know them, them calories add up they add up real quick and i'm like oh you know i work out i eat healthy but i don't see nothing going like nothing's changing my body what's going on here so then afterwards i moved to atlanta i started taking fitness more serious that's when i bought my scale on my very first scale and I started learning about caloric deficits and once I started learning about caloric deficits that's when everything started changing I still wasn't into really the whole strength training thing yet because I started doing a lot of plyometric and HIIT workouts so HIIT workouts are like very short time frame um, workouts but your heart rate is elevated to you know a certain extent and yeah, the HIIT workouts were fun. The plyometric workouts were fun. Plyometrics is like the, you know, the jumping the side to side, the burpees, you know, like box jumps and stuff like that. I really enjoyed that phase. That phase, I had got really small. That's, yeah, I had got really small during that time. And like, I, I loved the way I looked, but I ain't had no booty, I ain't had no legs no nothing so then i got on the 75 hard well no i fell into a depression gained weight got off of my social media page because i was like why am i even doing this fitness stuff when i can't even commit to what i have to do really so then after i got out of my dep my depression i started a 75 hard i started a 75 hard got into that started going to the gym then i was like you know what I'm gonna start strength training. I'm gonna start strength. I started lifting heavy in my squats, lifting heavy in my hip thrusts, lifting heavy in my deadlifts, everything. Like I was just doing it. And when I started lifting, that's when I seen the best transformation in my physique ever. And I would say that because muscle weighs more than fat, it just looks way better in my opinion a lot of women steer away from like muscles and stuff but i just feel like it makes your physique looks 10 times better than what it is that is just my opinion you know everyone is entitled to their own opinion but for me i love having a little muscle and i ain't talking about be jacked or or swole you don't gotta be like that but you know tone it up it looks good it looks good so then ever since i just fell in love with strength training i love lifting heavy i i just love it y'all that that is the answer to your question i didn't have to bulk up first it was all just different different phases chase chase me you want me to chase you oh chase how you doing chase here's a few low-key tied together well not really for you per se but how does your man manage with you being on prep and being gym orientated does he follow your prep eating wise all right how does my man manage with me being on prep and being gym orientated my man actually actually introduced me to the gym my man still works out we don't work out together we're the gym couple that goes Sometimes we don't even go into the gym together, okay? But we're the gym couple that's in the gym doing our own thing. Like, he's more calisthenics, you know, body weight. He has done weight training. He has done strength training. He, had the, he has done, like, bodybuilding training. But being in the field of work that he is in now, he's folk, like, he still does muscle, like, bodybuilding exercises but not as much as he does now and he's focusing more on his cardiovascular health and stuff like more like running longevity and stuff like that that's him as far as me being on prep he's cool with it he's actually wanted to do bodybuilding before but he's he just never really did it so He's actually cool with me doing the whole bodybuilding thing. He doesn't feel any way towards it, per se. Like, he has no negative feeling about it. As far as food, no, that, that man ain't eating nothing. I mean, I'm eating, like, he is not eating that. Like, me, I probably eat chicken and ground turkey 
every single day he he's not doing that for me like being that the woman i am i still cook my man different foods on the side like whatever he likes i still make him desserts and stuff like that like i i still have another person to you know cater to like be a partner to now when it gets to the nitty gritty huh you you gonna have to go down somewhere and get you something to eat because that's that's gonna be tempting that's gonna be like that's gonna be antagonizing me like no but he does not eat my prep food if i do make like an abundance of like chicken breasts or something i'm gonna have to style it up spice it up for him make it a little different like make him like a burrito with some extra stuff inside but he that man did not eat my prep food and he he know better not to touch my prep food I think that's all of the questions. I mean, this question actually that I'm about to answer was not here in this community post, but it was a really good question. All right, so it was actually in the vlog that I had just posted on Sunday. She said, how did you find your coach? Also, I'm not sure if you did a video on this before, but how did you decide you wanted to compete in fitness slash wellness all right how did i find my coach so i looked up other coaches just on instagram like i would just type in wellness like bodybuilding wellness and sometimes coaches like their actual instagram accounts would come up and i would just look at like the, at their work and stuff but i wanted a coach that was in the state of georgia so my best friend she actually suggested her coach that she worked with that's how i started working with my coach um i know it's not as easy for everyone but if i were to compete in bodybuilding again i would probably go to another coach and this coach is a woman and this coach is not in georgia she is actually in a completely different state and i would go with her but i would just say look on instagram first like do your research how did I decide that I wanted to compete in fitness and wellness? In the previous question when I was like, oh, I started the 75 hard and I started the whole like lifting heavy and stuff like that. When I fell in love with that, I was like, okay, I want to do powerlifting. But I didn't really want to do powerlifting. It wasn't until my best friend, like she was talking about bodybuilding and stuff but even then i wasn't interested in bodybuilding because at the time i didn't really like the look i really didn't like the look at the time but as my physique started changing and i started to like the way my physique was coming in like the muscles coming out and stuff like that i was like okay i may consider bodybuilding i may consider bodybuilding so that was like years and years like three years ago two years two three years ago it wasn't until last year like summertime i started following a lot of like wellness bodybuilders and i just love the way their physique looks i love the wellness physique to me it just looks very very feminine you know, in the wellness division, they focus more so on glutes, quads, and hamstrings. A lot of people, they compliment me on my quads. I was lacking a little bit in my hamstrings, but my glutes has even changed before I started work, working with my coach. Like I was working on my glutes for like a year and a half. I've seen a difference in my glutes. So December of last year, I had texted my coach like, hey, I'm interested in bodybuilding. And that's basically how I got into it. That's basically what helped me decide to do wellness or just to compete in fitness overall. Like, I feel like when a person starts a fitness journey, it's like, okay, you do, you do this every day, but what's next? There's that group of people that are looking for something more. And I feel like I fell into that group of people where I want to do something more. I just like the idea of a challenge, an idea of being pushed. Um, obviously, like bodybuilding is intense, like your 
food gets really low, you can't really do much, you're always in the gym, you're mentally exhausted, your body is like taxed out, like it's a lot, but it's something I'm willing to endure just to get get past that mental barrier and getting out of my comfort zone because it's it is a mental thing like when you're going through bodybuilding it's like how much more of this am i willing to take literally how shay would have said it's all a mental game and it is it is but those are the factors that have helped me come to a decision of me wanting to do something extra in fitness and what has helped me decide why I wanted to do wellness. I just love the appearance. I love the physique. Okay. But those were all of the questions. Obviously, if you guys have like any more questions, you can just comment them down below. Maybe we can do a part two if there's enough questions. I hope I answered everyone's questions the best of my ability i was being as authentic as possible as real as possible if something is unclear to you you know if you feel like i didn't provide enough information that's when google comes into play okay if you're unsure always do some extra research to get the answer that you feel like you deserve i really enjoyed doing this this was fun you know i appreciate all the love of the comments you know loving my content you know loving my physique i really really appreciate it and i'm glad that i get to share the knowledge that i do have with you guys to help you guys along your journey as well so if you made it this far in the video and if you like it make sure you leave a thumbs up don't forget to comment down below don't forget to like don't forget to share share this with anybody your mommy your daddy your granddaddy anybody your sister your grandma your auntie your sister baby cousin tracy i don't know share it with somebody that this can help and most of all most importantly make sure you subscribe turn on your post notification bell so that you never miss a beat when your girl upload okay and as always until next time 